Well, uh, joining us uh, now is France expert uh, Katsper Kita. Uh, Katsper, pleasure to see you. Thanks for joining us, as always. Carlos, All right. thanks for having me. Yeah, a huge scare in Paris. Uh, French police cordoning off uh, the entire area around uh, the Iranian embassy uh, due to a suspected suicide bomber. Uh, but that was not uh, the case, was it? What really happened there? Well, we, stint, we still do not yet know what exactly happened there, but uh, it is entirely possible that uh, uh, we will, that someone wanted to plot a terrorist attack against the Iranians or that this was some kind of provocation. You have to remember that the relationship between France and Iran are quite tense because of the fact that Iran has been holding hostage uh, for French citizens, uh, some of them for multiple years, despite the fact that France has been trying to me mediate um, uh, and France has been trying to influence uh, Iran diplomatically to release its uh, its citizens, uh, which which are held, which are being imprisoned in Iran. Uh, Iran has refused to do so uh, for the la for over a year since the last arrest, since we had Louis Arnaud, who was arrested in in uh, in Iran at the end of 2022. Uh, and uh, in, re in recent weeks, we have seen that France has helped Israel uh, to shoot down Iranian missiles. And we have also seen, on the other hand, uh, threats, of, uh, threats of terrorist attacks in, in France, um, uh, possibly uh, linked to, to ISIS. But we know that in the past, Iran has also been capable of conducting terrorist attacks on, uh, on the European soil. We have to remember that, for example, it was in France where uh, Iran killed, well, the Islamic Republic of, of Iran killed one of uh, many um, politicians linked to the previous Iranian government, the Shah regime, and some, uh, some of its opponents uh, who, uh, who escaped Iran in the past. So we have uh, plenty of uh, history of uh, 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 attacks in uh, in France conducted by by the Iranians in this in, in this regard. That's right, and uh, yep, the the, the terrorist uh, level, the threat level uh, in uh, in France has been raised uh, to high, I believe, um, and this before uh, the the Olympics that are coming up in June. Yes, uh, exactly so. And the Olympics will be a, a very important test for President Macron and uh, his entire government, uh, because obviously this is a, a, a test of his ability to provide the security for French citizens and to provide um, security for all the tourists, all the, all the sportsmen and sportswomen. Obviously, everyone remembers the 1972 dramatic situation at the Munich Olympics, where, it, where some Israel, Israeli sportsmen were were killed by uh, by ter by uh, terrorists. Mm, we no one wants something similar to happen now, but we know that the international tensions are high. Also, the political situation in France is quite tense. And as I've said before, France is engaged in the Middle East. France uh, uh, has uh, tense uh, relations with Iran, with uh, with uh, is Islamic terrorists, uh, uh, and uh, at the same time, you know, Macron has been uh, governing on the premise of providing security, stability, has been presenting himself as uh, the, the, the one who is the defender of the republic, of the public order against, at the same time, uh, as he would call it, the far right, the far left, and the Islamist terrorists. And this will be an incredibly important test for him to actually provide that, uh, while France is trying to build its image while Fran uh, as, a, as an international player, and while France will be in, in the center of attention of everyone during the during the Olympics, we know that it was the it was a Frenchman uh, who in the, who reinvented the Olympic Games, uh, Pierre de Coubertin. Uh, this is something very historically, culturally important for uh, for the French, but at the same time, they are worried that the, that there will be some terrorist attack. Uh, we have seen that in subsequent polls, you know, or, or only around a half of the French believe that the state will be able to provide security for uh, for the participants of the Olympics. And Macron has routinely speculated that perhaps we will not be able to have a full scale um, uh, opening ceremony because of the terrorist threats. And he said that we have not only plan A, but plan B, plan C for the opening ceremony because of the terrorist threats. Uh, and this is something crucial for his position internally and for, for, for how France will be viewed externally, whether France will be viewed, you know, as an important 
power uh, as a serious state, as a um, country that is so rich culturally, historically, and that will probably have a lot of success in sporting competitions at these Olympics with Paris, um, a beautiful city being viewed as from, with, by over, over people who will come as a, as a magnificent place to, to, spend, uh, to spend some time? Uh, or will it, be, will it be viewed as a, as a state that is not able to provide basic security that you would be afraid to go to Paris because of subsequent terrorist attacks? This is something absolutely crucial for both for Macron, for his legacy, because you have to remember that he has been already in power for over seven years. And these Olympics will be an important moment of his two-term tenure. Uh, this, 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 uh, this is something that he has been preparing for many years and uh, th- 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 for which he may be remembered. Yep, and uh, he, certainly the Olympics are a, a great uh, PR opportunity, but also a possibility uh, for, for a disaster. Now, as you mentioned, uh, Mr. Macron is, uh, is uh, taking the opportunity right now that's arisen in Europe to take leadership in terms of, uh, in terms of assistance uh, to Ukraine and, uh, and uh, the conflict that's happening just east of our border here. But also it looks like he's trying to take a, also more of a leadership role uh, in terms of uh, the conflict in Israel. Uh, recently, he met uh, with Lebanon's caretaker prime minister, uh, Najib Mikati, in Paris. Uh, what's he trying to do there? Well, Macron would love, as you've mentioned, both in terms of our, uh, let's say, our uh, Ukrainian conflict or in terms of uh, Europe, Europe's relations with Ukraine and Russia or in terms of Europe's relations with United Sta- with United States or with Middle East or with, with uh, uh, the Triangle Europe, America, China. Macron would love to be the uh, balancing power. France would be a balancing power, the puissance d'équilibre, the, mm-hmm. the power, the, the player that is able to mediate, that is able to meet with everyone and therefore is able to impose peace and stability and uh, is able to present himself as a responsible homme d'état. But uh, in Lebanon, obviously, France has a lot of historic ties. France, uh, well, Lebanon used to be controlled by France and France is still active uh, politically and militarily. France still still has a military basis in Lebanon, Iraq, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, uh, and Uh, uh, Macron and and the French government is obviously unhappy with the fact that uh, we have uh, we have had uh, recently some uh, exchange some some uh, exchanges between Hezbollah, Hezbollah and and Israel that uh, uh, the situation in Lebanon uh, is uh, is bad uh, that uh, that um, you you have the risk of. Uh, of an escalation of uh, Hezbollah be uh, going um, more deeply into the conflict between Israel and Hamas, and certainly Macron would want to avoid that. And on the other hand, I think that he also here is engaged in a rivalry uh, between different uh, players in the Middle East, which want in this very complicated, uh, with this very complicated political landscape in Lebanon, where you have, you know, you have both uh, Shia Muslims, Sunni Muslims, uh, Christians, uh, and no one has a clear majority. You have ethnic differences. You have Hezbollah. You have uh, Iran that is active there. You have uh, the, the Saudi Arabia, which is active, and France also is has been trying to play a political role in Lebanon, obviously for for decades and also uh, I think wants to uh, preserve itself as a protect as a protector of uh, of the Christian part of uh, of uh, Lebanon's society this is something that many French politicians uh, like to present themselves at but at the same time as a, a, a as a Western power which is active in trying at least to provide some level of security and stability in Lebanon uh, with this complicated map of uh, of regional rivalries. Well, there you go. And Mr. Macron will be the next uh, de Gaulle, yeah? He would love to be so, but, you know, every French president would like to be the next de Gaulle. Uh, and, you know, de Gaulle is an interesting parallel because uh, uh, he first was a very... Um, supportive of Israel for for many years, but then he got angry at Israel when Israel decided to uh, to uh, take part in the Six Day War when Israel took over uh, the Gaza Strip, uh, the West Bank, and Eastern Jerusalem, which is obviously crucial for uh, for uh, for the Israelis uh, for obvious reasons. Um, and then the goal uh, for some for some years to put an embargo on on sending military. 
uh, aid uh, to um, to uh, to Israel. And nowadays, also uh, uh, sending military aid to Israel is controversial in France. Um, France is helping Israel militarily, is selling its weapons. But you have some protests. For example, recently, Amnesty International um, sued France, stating that France is participating, you know, in, in genocide against the Palestinian people, etc. France is also very engaged militarily with the United Arab Emirates, more so with Israel, but France is very much engaged with United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia and Qatar and Egypt. So it is uh, sending uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, military aid, uh, a lot of weapons to um, uh, some of the most important Israeli Arab partners. I mean, Egypt, United Arab Emirates and um, uh, and uh, Saudi Arabia, obviously Qatar is, is not an Israeli partner. Um, so we see that uh, France is trying to balance as the goal uh, as the goal would. You know, this is one, also one of the reasons why he left uh, uh, Algerian, why he agreed to Algerian independence, that uh, he wanted to preserve ties with the Arab world and with Israel at the same time. And Macron also wants to do so. This is why sometimes we, we, we may have the feeling that some of his actions are quite schizophrenic, because, you know, one day he would criticize Israel, one day he would say that France would always help Israel when, when Israel is under attack. But he's been trying to, to balance it out. And I think that he hasn't been doing such a bad job uh, regarding how close he was able to get with France. That's and right. Mr. Macron, Mr. Macron certainly is stepping it up uh, recently, and uh, in at least in terms of his image. Mr. Kita always it is a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, that was uh, Katzberg Kita, nice our France expert. Have a wonderful day to you too. Thank you.